Hi, everybody. My name is Caleb Ward. I am the program manager for Late Night, and I'm here with Jan Linhart, creator of Fish on a Stick. Jan, it's good to What's see you. Up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to everybody on the internet. Everybody that's ever been on the internet is here right now. So, um, Caleb, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jan, I wanted to talk a little bit about just, just right off the bat of sort of where the idea for fish and a stick came from um you know there obviously is a late night format that's been around for you know uh decades um but this is certainly a new take on that and so i wanted to talk a little bit about sort of where this came from where you know what this show means to you yeah well after a film school where i was always like on long periods planning stuff and uh, on concepts and everything i really starved for a project where i can do like where i can uh how i say yeah just um put every idea in it that that comes to my head and you know i have such a big sketchbook and uh, i just wanted to put everything into it without uh, yeah, many restrictions of having fear that it doesn't uh, fit in the project. Yeah. Yeah. So like being able to just like throw a lot of ideas at the wall and, and see what sticks. Yeah. 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 I mean, that that's certainly how it feels. It has, uh, you know, it has has this this sketch mentality, which I really personally enjoy um, and, you know, sort of threading it through with this like late night experience of of almost like just like having just like a regular talk show, you know? Um, I want to talk a little bit about sort of, I mean, you have these almost like street performance uh, scenes that mm -hmm. um, that were some of some of my most favorite parts of the, of the show itself. Um, can you talk a little bit about filming some of those scenes, um, like the argument scene between uh, yourself and the girl on the street? Um, you know, were any of the, was any of that cut out because, you know, you were getting arrested or like, um, you know, did anything go wrong or go really right or things you weren't planning for? Um, you know, there's just a lot of like freestyle in that. Yeah, definitely. Um, not much was planned, you know, just like, okay, a basic idea and laying defenseless on the floor and, uh, and like, yeah, threatening people, I, I uh, expected more, I don't know, maybe, I hope not to get kicked in the face, you know, but uh, I, I, I thought maybe there will be more, uh, yeah, threatening back, but the people really just called the police plenty times, and uh, <laughs> yeah. we had to, yeah, we had to run away like two or three times, but uh, yeah, otherwise just many kids came up to us and like, oh, this is going to be on TikTok and stuff, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's it's almost hard nowadays to get away with sort of like a live prank show. You know, I know that there there are a few people who can really do that, but because you know we live online and 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 we live on cameras, like that's got to be a really challenging thing to do and still get like a very natural reaction of like, oh, this is just a crazy thing that I'm seeing. You know, as 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 the audience, you know, in in public um I, yeah. would, I would have to imagine you know did you find that that was sort of challenging did you feel like did you feel like people knew you know what you were getting into sooner than they would have maybe 15 20 years ago yeah definitely and also we had like a little bit i i think too big of a camera with us so it was also uh, like uh, difficult to hide it yeah. But uh, yeah, you just film uh, four hours, then you have the, those 30 seconds where, where everything fits, right? Right, right. Um, do you have a favorite um, sketch in within the show? Like the, the little interstitial sketches, you know, in between scenes, like like the woman sitting and gets up and everybody sniffing the seed or things like that. Like, because that's my that's my favorite one. I love that because, yeah, you know, that's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, I, I love it for so many reasons. Like, uh, it's so short, but like says so much. <laughs> yeah, it was also, uh, I mean, oftentimes uh, while writing it, you know, I was thinking, will I ever get people to do it? You know, because <laughs> Switzerland is also harder i imagine than, than in la if you write on the internet hey i want to do this and that you know yeah, it's a small yeah. country. everybody thinks like oh maybe this will be a bad choice for my career or right. whatever 
So uh, yeah, but it was a lot of fun and uh, yeah, it was cool. That, you know, that actually kind of brings you to my next question. Could you talk a little bit about sort of the casting process, like how you were able to get people to really just, that that's the thing that, that I was really bowled over by in the show is that everyone fully commits. Like there's, there's no one that just like half asses it. Like you have people that are like really showing up for like the smallest things. And that's kind of a challenge. I would say even in LA, like even in the States, like getting people to like fully commit to something that's, you know, even just like a small bit. So what was sort of the casting process like as far as getting people? Is it like friends and family or, you know, or are your, is your family no longer speaking to you? And, you know, <laughs> mm. uh, mostly I was just uh, texting people like it's mostly actors, right? So sure. I, I was hitting them, hitting them up and I just sent them stuff that they can watch some of my old works, you know, like if they like my style and everything. And then there was no rehearsing and nothing. There was no time. So we just met yeah. on the set and like, uh, yeah. Mostly Figure like this. And, and, or sometimes I also took over some parts that because I just didn't have anybody else right. to do it. Yeah. Or also, yeah, we have friends. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the writing process. Um, you know, is it just you? Do you have a group that you write with, a writing partner, um, where, you know, there's, there's so many, there are so many like ideas coming from various different places. I just would love to know sort of your process for, um, you know, for, for getting ideas on, on the page and getting it on screen. Mm. Yeah, mostly I'm lying in the bed and right before sleep, they, they just come, right? And so I wait, put, them, put them on the phone and then I do the first draft most of the times. Uh, and then I have like one friend that uh, always sits with me and then we like, yeah, throw in, throw in things and I see if he laughs at the, where he doesn't laugh. Most of the time it doesn't get in. And yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. So if he doesn't laugh, you're like, that's the one. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> like, I mean, I cringed out. And yeah, like you're like, oh yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, um, or also my girlfriend. Like a lot of credits also has to go to my girlfriend. That right. wouldn't be what it is. For letting her. you do this, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> also, that, that of course, yeah. Um, yeah. She's also the dominatrix in, in the clip. Oh, because, because uh the 600 pound uh, dominatrix didn't show up. So, <laughs> so, so she had to fill in. <laughs> yeah. Were there, were there any, um, were there any ideas or, or sketches or, or bits that were just like too much that you were like, okay, we can't do this. No, actually not. I just did everything. <laughs> I did everything that I wanted. <laughs> Yeah, no, oh, actually, okay. uh, we, we wanted to do the, um, where, where we, where I play the artist, you know, and then I'm like, uh, saying, you don't know anything about art, and mm -hmm. then we fight and, and make, uh, make out and stuff. We wanted mm -hmm. to do that in a restaurant, but yeah, because of production reasons, it, it was not possible, and because of COVID, COVID and stuff. Sure, yeah. You know? Um, you know, just sort of talking about, like, on, on the tables, you know, and then throw a, a Right. Um, you know, talking about sort of like uh, like having locations, you're shooting in like some really beautiful places, um, you know, some beautiful restaurants and hotels and things like that. Like how how are you able to get some of these like amazing locations? Like it, it's just it looks very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just lucky that uh, Zurich has a lot of a lot of stuff to offer, and uh, we were lucky in that short period of uh, research and location scouting that uh, that they led us. I I, mm. I mean, I, I probably for it's mostly the restaurant scene, right, where you have these beautiful uh, room mm -hmm. structures and everything. And there, I probably hit up fifteen restaurants, and one of them said yes, and it was the best the best one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the, the coloring of it is, is really striking. I really enjoyed it. It sort of has this like glossy, um, almost like desaturated look that, that, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just very 
pleasant to look at while like a very like potentially unpleasant thing is happening on screen. Um, so I, <laughs> I really enjoyed that, that contrast. Um, so, you know, what are you working on now? Um, you know, does fish on a stick have a future beyond this? Um, you know, bring me up to speed on, on sort of where you're at and what, um, you know, what's, what's next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on uh, further episodes, even if I don't know like when or how it will be produced. And maybe also I can imagine that there will be like uh, in a little bit different style, you know, more of the street stuff. Not only you are saying that that was the most enjoyable kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's also easier to produce. It's uh, cheaper. So maybe it will be more of this. And otherwise, I'm, I'm writing a feature film about lucid dreaming and but it's a uh, very in the beginning beginning phase otherwise i'm totally in the cryptocurrency now so that's uh, what i'm doing now nice what what's your what's your hot tip for people tracking cryptocurrency ada ada yeah that's Sorry, the next ADA. one mm -hmm. i lost a bunch of money on dogecoin but i'm just going to hold on to it and see what happens yeah we all got to do that yeah it's, you know, you hold on to it until it pops, you know? Yeah. Well, Jan, thanks so much uh, for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, did you have any, anything else you wanted to mention, like where people can follow you or, or find you or find more episodes of, of Fish on a Stick? Yeah, well, sure. Go to, go to Instagram, Jan underline to come. There will be uh, all the news for, for the episodes. Awesome. Love it. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.